Over 100 million years ago, a relatively small carnivore moved through the floodplains of prehistoric North America. It was a remarkable dinosaur, and unbeknownst to it, it would completely change the world of paleontology. This was the Deinonychus. Thanks to its popularity, most are aware of the Deinonychus, yet few truly understand the amazingness of this creature. Its remains were first uncovered way back in the early 1930s, however, it wasn't until 1969 when paleontologist John Ostrom would officially give it its name. Deinonychus, which meant terrible claw, a tribute to its elongated talon located on its foot. The discovery of Deinonychus was not just important because of its unique claw, but also because it shifted perceptions on dinosaurs as a whole. Before Deinonychus, many perceived dinosaurs as slow, lumbering dimwits. Thus, with Deinonychus being an agile, clever, and active hunter, many started to look at dinosaurs in a new light. And even today, with so many more new dinosaurs, the Deinonychus continues to turn heads, as after all, it was quite exceptional. It belongs to the family of theropods known as the Dromaeosauridae, which has many other well-known members, such as the Velociraptor, whom the Deinonychus is closely related to. It was mid-sized for being a dromaeosaur, not being one of the largest or smallest, with fully mature specimens reaching 3.4 meters or 11 feet and 2 inches in length, while having a hip height of 0.87 meters or 2.9 feet. Even though there is a respectable amount of agreement on these units, people are not so sure about its weight. Some think it was lightly built, weighing around 73 kilos or 161 pounds, while more robust ideas suggest it could have reached 100 kilograms or 220 pounds. In either case, it was still gracefully built and its bones were relatively hollow, allowing it to be quite agile and speedy. However, perhaps not as speedy as one would presume. When it was first discovered, Ostrom himself believed it would have been lightning fast. However, this assumption was made during a time when a complete leg bone had not yet been found. And when one was finally located, it led to a surprising revelation, as the leg's length and structure indicated that estimates on its speed were probably exaggerated. And with the complete leg bones, Ostrom changed his belief, stating that while not being anywhere close to being slow, it was probably not that much faster than other dinosaurs in the area, and was without a doubt slower than modern day flightless birds. However, this in no way means its legs were useless, as along with still allowing the Deinonychus to be agile, they were also equipped with the creature's most iconic trait, its terrible claw, aka the sickle-shaped talon that was found on the second digit of its foot, which could reach 5 inches or 13 centimeters in length. And it should be mentioned that the talon size also played a part in why the Deinonychus wasn't extremely fast. The claw has been integral in its fame, yet despite much research on it, there is still disagreement on its usage. Most agree it was used for hunting, but the how is where the arguments lie. One of the issues is that the shape and curvature widely vary from specimen to specimen, and no one is sure why, making it harder to find a conclusive answer on its true purpose. Originally, it was suggested that the Deinonychus would attack and kill by kicking animals with its feet, inflicting deep cuts with its elongated foot claw. Some even said it could have been powerful enough to even disembowel Ceratopsians. However, this has since been mostly debunked, and through the years, ideas on the claw continue to shift, with one rising trend suggesting that instead of slashing, it would actually puncture prey, leading to death. But, some paleontologists had issues with this, as a simulation involving a pig carcass and a robotic talon found that it could not cut, slash, or puncture to any meaningful degree which then led to some speculation that the claws were actually made for climbing trees, as the Deinonychus also coincidentally had forelimb claws that appeared to be well designed for holding. But in 2011, a new study came out that once again suggested an entirely new use for its talon, and that was pinning. In this scenario, the Deinonychus would use its agility to get on top of an animal and proceed to pin it down with its talon, while grasping the unfortunate animal at the same time with its quote-unquote hands, which were relatively large and equipped with their own set of three sharp claws. Some paleontologists also believe that its feathers are indirect evidence for this pinning hypothesis, because even though no direct skin impressions have been found, it's almost universally agreed upon that the Deinonychus had feathers, and the ones on its arms were likely quite long, and could have been used as stabilizers during a fight. The skeleton also had a relatively long tail that was built for flexibility and could likely easily bend side to side, leading many to believe that it was yet another stabilization tool that the Deinonychus could use while hunting. And once on top of a prey, it would then dispatch it by administering deadly bites with its mouth. 
Once upon a time, it was believed that the bite of the Deinonychus wasn't all that much, and that if anything, it would use its jaws as a saw to make up for the lack of power. However, this notion changed when paleontologists started finding dinosaur bones with Deinonychus tooth marks, meaning it could bite hard enough to puncture bone. And based on this, newer estimates for its biting power suggest it could bite harder than a hyena. Also, if this biting power didn't showcase the deadliness of Deinonychus, then it's a good thing that it also had excellent vision. Studies on its skull indicated that it likely had a great level of binocular vision, which would allow it to easily spot potential victims, even in underbrush. And to top it all off, there is an idea that it was a pack hunter. This stems from multiple findings of Deinonychus around skeletons of Tenontosaurus, a genus of ornithopods that as adults were too large for a sole Deinonychus to take down. One such finding consisted of an adult Tenontosaurus and five Deinonychus, while another site involved six partial remains of Tenontosaurus and one Deinonychus, albeit there was also an excess of Deinonychus teeth in the vicinity. Both these findings led to the belief that the Deinonychus was possibly a pack hunter, and other evidence that pushes this idea further is that footprints have been found in trackways that indicate a group moving together in a coordinated fashion. However, others believe that it wasn't really a pack hunter, being more like a Komodo dragon when it came to feeding behaviors, as Komodo dragons for the most part are are solitary hunters, but will accumulate around freshly killed animals where a chaotic feeding frenzy will take place, which sometimes also results in a Komodo being harmed as well. And this is important to note, as certain Deinonychus found around these Tenontosaurus were missing body parts that match the body parts that are usually chomped off during Komodo dragon feasts, indicating to some that the Deinonychus did not have organized hunts, rather feeding frenzies that could get quite dangerous. However, if it did not hunt in packs, it brings up the question of how the numerous Tenontosaurus died, as many of the ones found near Deinonychus were adults. Some use that they were taken out by the largest predator in the lands, which was not Deinonychus, rather Acrocanthosaurus, or that they had died from other causes. It's possible that the Deinonychus were simply scavenging, though paleontologists are fairly confident that at least part of the time they were behind the kills, as no other obvious damage has been found on the Tenontosaurus. Along with Acrocanthosaurus, there are many other dinosaurs in the area, as the Deinonychus inhabited a part of North America that during its existence, which spanned between 115 and 108 million years ago, held quite a range of dinosaurs, including the Sauropelta, Zephyrosaurus, and Sauroposeidon. And while other dinosaurs were present, these ones are the dinosaurs that have been most associated with Deinonychus remains. Back then, the Deinonychus presided over a sizable chunk of what is today the United States, as skeletal remains have been found in Montana, Utah, Wyoming, Oklahoma, and potentially Maryland. During the early Cretaceous, these lands were comprised of floodplains and swamp-like habitats. Additionally, subtropical forests, deltas, and lagoons were also present and peppered the area where the Deinonychus would have roamed for millions of years, prowling for its victims. There also seems to have been somewhat of a high population of this dromaeosaur, thanks to its success. And one way that the Deinonychus was able to decrease competition amongst its own was by hunting different animals based on age. This was good news for the Deinonychus, but bad news for other residents, as it meant more animals had to be wary of this deadly bandits.